How you doing, Justin? Here today we are checking out an all-time Nirvana classic. It is All Apologies. It's in drop D tuning down a semitone. If you want to play along with the original recording, I've just gone for regular drop D for this lesson. So I'm playing an acoustic guitar. This is kind of unplugged D, which is not that different to the original recording, except there's more distortion, obviously, in the choruses, which sound a little clearer on an acoustic guitar, but pretty adaptable if you're playing an electric guitar, just whack on some distortion there for the chorus. The chorus has got a little bit of tracking going on on the original recording as well, a few layers, which I'll explain a little bit about uh, when we get to it. But the, the key feature here really is that riff. So getting into drop D, first of all, you just want to use, let me just get back into regular tuning. To get into drop D, all you're going to do is tune this thicker string down one tone. You can use the fourth string as a reference. So. If it helps, you can use a harmonic on the 12th fret of the thicker string. You play those thickest three strings, now you should have a nice big fat D chord. If you play a regular open D as well, you'll get a really nice big, very big lush kind of a sound going on. Now, what's happening with the riff here is using like a, what's called a drone effect, where we keep that open D string, the thicker string, played and ringing out while we play some other riffs. There's definitely some doubling going on, even on the uh, uh, unplugged version, there's Pat's playing the riff as well, but you can quite clearly see Kurt playing it, although I'm still a little bit uncertain about the way exactly Kurt plays it for the variation, but again, I'll talk about that with you in a little bit more detail. So let's get to a close up, check out how to play the riff. <laughs> That's the riff all of the way through. Let's break it down bar by bar into this little four bar sequence. So we're starting with the open thicker string, then ninth fret, 10th fret, ninth fret with the first and second fingers. Now, it would seem a lot easier to use a little finger there, but you can quite clearly see Kurt using his third finger there. So, And that also forces you to do a little bit of a slide into that note if you want to get super authentic. Twice on the 12th fret there with the third finger, 10th fret, 9th fret. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and all down picks. One and two and three and four and. Now if you accidentally hit that thicker string a few more times, going to get hurt doesn't really sound that bad and it sounds like there's a, quite a few variations going on through the song anyway but so I recommend starting but if you accidentally hit that thicker string a little few more times nothing's going to really happen uh, the second bar starts the same definitely you can hear on the unplugged one he's playing the thicker string one note and then with the thicker string again so this time, we move the same, but onto the fourth string. Drone is still ringing out. So the first two bars now would be one and two and three and four and and two and three and four and. Okay, those two bars again. Three, four, one and two and three and four. That's what's played for the verses. You can hear Kurt playing it that same way most of the time. It's pretty consistent. But there's this little variation that happens in the fourth bar. So he plays that riff. Back to the same as the first time. This is the 11th fret of the 3rd string, twice. 9th fret on the 3rd string, 
to 12th fret on the 4th string. Now, I wasn't sure. Uh, I felt like I could hear this string ringing out sometimes. So I thought it might have been rather than Particularly on the unplugged version, you can see that Kurt is playing a, um, a guitar without a colorway, so the body would be here. So getting up to might have been a little bit difficult. Uh, and there's a little clip on the um, unplugged one where you can see Pat Smear playing it here. Um, so that's my best guess is that it's played here. But if you wanted to... would work as well. So that, that would be 16th, 14th, 12th fret there on the 4th string. Now I've got to admit I found playing and singing that riff at the same time much more difficult than I anticipated actually. I generally feel like I'm reasonable at playing over a, a tricky riff. It's usually just practice so I think I need to practice this a bunch more times to get kind of comfortable singing over it. Probably you will as well. Uh, it's very difficult for us humans to think of two things at the same time. So if you're trying to concentrate on the riff and trying to concentrate on the singing, that's really difficult. You find your attention has to flick between the two things uh, very rapidly, which can cause things to go wrong. So um, if you want to do that, it is just going to be practice. You're going to have to practice the riff to the point where you feel confident enough to sing over it without having to think about it. Okay, so you have to automate the riff part, probably. Or you could try and automate the singing. I'm not a good enough singer for doing that. But the idea there literally would be repetition of that riff over and over again. And then having a bit of a go at singing over it. Um, what the hell, I'll try and embarrass myself here in front of you guys. So it is only that bit that you have to sing over. So even this is really good practice being able to kind of slightly distract yourself while the riff's still going. What else could I be? All apologies. What else could I say? Everyone is gay. What else could I write? It's pretty tricky, this song, to do that. And I'm really having to pull on full concentration mode to do that. And then you, you heard I like forgot the lyrics and I've got the lyrics on a little screen down here. But I'm having to read them. I'm trying to think about it. It's really difficult. And I kind of got the feeling then if I did maybe another couple of hours practice of just playing that riff and then having to go at doing the singing, it would, it would come right. I have time to do that for your lesson for you right now. But if you want to play this song, that is the trick is playing the riff, making sure you've got it right and comfortable and you really know it well. If you're still not sure about how the riff goes or you've still got technical problems with it, singing and playing at the same time is going to be a complete nightmare. So don't do that. Uh, just concentrate on the riff, playing the riff over and over again and making sure that you can do it confidently and then start to try and distract yourself. I wouldn't worry about singing, first of all, just thinking about other stuff. Can you think about away from the guitar? Can you remove your concentration from there? And then have a go at maybe trying to get into the lyric as well. I find it a little bit odd for my range as well, this song, but it's definitely a very cool song and worth uh, persevering with, especially if you're a Nirvana fan, you want to add it to your set of songs that you can play. Um, the good news is that the chorus is really super simple. Uh, it's six bars, I think, on the G, which Kurt uses his second finger. I'd probably tend to use my first finger or my third finger. Second finger feels like an odd choice, but you can clearly see Kurt do it on quite a few videos. So uh, he's just playing, barring the fifth, fret thickest three strings again uh, on the original recording it sounds like there's some lifting going on that kind of thing after researching a few videos there's none of that going on at least in Kurt's part so I suspect it's a second layer uh, perhaps played, played by Pat I don't know um, if you're playing it on your own, you definitely want to just be staying on that one chord. 
it was re I found it really difficult to define a set part there out of the two parts, the one that was staying there and the other one that's moving around. So it's up to you if you want to dig deeper into that and give it a hot, you know a solid dose of listening, you might get it figured out. Otherwise, just playing that G chord there for six bars. Again, you can see Kirk quite clearly using alternate picking here. So still just playing on the thinnest three strings though. Uh, one and two and three. In the sun, in the sun, I feel as one. In the sun, in the sun. Mary, it's just going to a regular A with a barring with the first finger. And then when you play that chord, it's held for two bars. So A, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Buried, one, two, three, four. Okay, and then it's back into the riff. So chorus again, six bars on the G. Uh, so it's just gone from. end of the song it stays on the A chord for considerably longer on that little kind of riffy part but other than that if you just check out the tune there's a little bit of kind of noise scape stuff going on as well again a lot of these kind of records have multiple layers on the original recording so you might want to check out the unplugged one for a good clear picture of what's going on and a nice way to play the song if you want to play it on acoustic on your own if you dig the lesson, I really appreciate it if you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you don't already. Plenty of fun stuff coming up. And don't forget to hit the bell icon if you want to be alerted when I'm going live. There's almost certainly going to be some live Nirvana transcribing coming up. I can see it in my crystal ball now. Anyway, have a great one. I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You'll take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.